Hi, I'm Jace, and this is Wine Chat, and we're here today at Harvest in St. Louis with winery chef from Mondavi, Jeff Moser. Jeff, nice to have you. Should Thanks, I call Jace. you Jeff, or should I have you call you Chef? I'm really bad at this. I don't understand what the Jeff's the fine. Yeah. Jeff is fine. Okay, we're cool. on friendly terms here. You're much friendlier than the last guy. <laughs> um, so the first question I have for you: You are a winery chef. Now, I don't exactly know what a winery chef does. How does? Because you've had this uh, this gig since about January. How does this differ from other jobs you've had that you know weren't winery uh, related positions? Yeah, before I started at the Robert Mondavi Winery, I've been working in restaurants for about the past 15 years. And my last job was as the executive chef of Julia's Kitchen, which was a fine dining restaurant in Copia, this food and wine museum in Napa, California. So the, the main differences are that the winery chef prepares foods to be paired with specific wines whereas a restaurant chef is more concerned about just creating his menu and having the dishes you know, sort of stand alone well, go with the various different things. Um, so you're definitely much more wine focused. It's also probably more of, a, uh, more of like a catering venue. Everything is by appointment. There's no walk-ins. You're, uh, you're not dealing with the, uh, the stress of up and down covers. Um, you know, we do everything from lunch for Margaret Mondavi and a couple friends to dinners for a couple hundred people. And it just sort of changes uh, on a daily or weekly basis, but we generally know ahead of time what's going what's gonna to happen. So my question for you then is, if, I'm, uh, if I get some PR material from Mondavi and it has a pairing for the wine, will that be you at some point? Am I, am I getting a, a recipe yes. of yours? Yeah, we, uh, I actually just started posting uh, recipes on the Robert Mondavi Winery Facebook page. So I'm going to start doing one uh, once, once a month on that site. And we also just started doing blogs on the Robert Mondavi uh, Winery website. Um, so you can definitely find recipes that I have paired with specific wines on those two uh, internet venues. And then on marketing material, yeah, that's, that's a big part of my job is coming up with the, with the pairings. Um, that's what I do on a daily basis. You know, we have a core group of wines that we make and that we use for the various meals that we do in the, the vineyard room, it's called, which is where I do all of the, the meals at the winery. So what's a pairing currently that you're really excited about? Well, uh, you know, we do, we do all sorts of, of pairings. You know, we do lots of different food uh, salads with, you know, the light Fumé Blanc to steaks with the big Cabernet. Uh, I also try and do some pairings that are a little bit, a little bit more unusual, sort of change things up for people to uh, sort of give them a different experience when they actually come to the winery. Uh, one dish I'm actually doing here at, at Harvest tonight is one that's, that we're doing currently at the winery and is pretty well received. It's a pan-roasted Alaskan halibut with parsnip puree, wild mushrooms, rainbow chard, and a red wine reduction. So the uh, sort of the savoriness of the mushrooms uh, and the, the earthiness of the parsnips sort of ties the sort of the light flaky halibut uh, into a red wine kind of dish. You know, the, and then the red wine reduction also brings it to a level where it goes, oh, we're serving it with uh, the 2007 Robert Mondavi Winery Pinot Noir. So uh, do you use that Pinot Noir for the reduction or use something else entirely? Or you just uh, grab something non-Mondavi that's, you know... No, 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 I, that's, <laughs> that's definitely a perk of working at the, at the winery is that I get to cook with, with nice wines. You know, I don't generally cook with the reserves, but uh, I'm still cooking with very nice wine. Now, let me ask you, there is some argument, and, and now you've got a menu, you're really strictly working with Mondavi wines. There's some argument that Napa wines are too rich, too alcoholic, and just too big for food. Now, I imagine you have a differing opinion on the matter, um, but does it present any challenges, and what would you say to that? Well, I would say, uh, first of all, that there are a lot of different wines made in the Napa Valley. There are uh, wines that are pretty low price point, wines that are really high price point, there are wines that are uh, light in style, wines that are very robust. I think you can't lump them all together. Um, and then the next thing that I would say is that where I am specifically at the Robert Mondavi Winery, it's always been a focus of that winery to enjoy wine with food. It's always been one of the major uh, components of, of the wines that Robert Mondavi tried to make. He was very interested in uh, the whole synergy between wine, food, and the arts. And the, the job that I have currently has existed at this particular winery for about 40 years. So they've, they've had a commitment to, to making food-friendly wines and showcasing them alongside food for, for guests uh, 
for, for quite a long time. And I think that there, there are some real big, juicy Cabernets made in, in the Napa Valley. Um, and I think that's probably where that uh, reputation comes from. Uh, the thing that I would say about that is that if those wines, I think probably if cellared for a little while, would also be enjoyable with food. But nobody's waiting that long. Right, people don't wait. And I mean, I, I understand that there are a lot of real big wines made in Napa, but I think, uh, I think you can very easily find food-friendly wines from the Napa Valley, including those at the Robert Mondavi Winery. Well, fair enough. So next question. We're, we're here, we, this is our third show talking about wine and food pairing. But I, I feel like we're always talking fine dining, food and wine. What's using a Mandavi wine, maybe something you make at home, or maybe you do, you know, you're, you're a chef, maybe you do fine dining at home, but what's something that just about anybody can do on a weeknight to pair food and a, wine, a Mandavi wine? Uh, yeah, I think, I think something that, that would be easy to do, do at home would be uh, a fish dish, something that doesn't require a lot of, a lot of prep ahead of time. Um, I was doing a dish uh, <clears throat> recently at the winery that's just, uh, it's, it's pan-roasted salmon with uh, some wild mushrooms and some uh, butternut squash. And uh, the, one of the things that I, I think uh, is important for people to, to understand is that it's not necessarily the, the protein that you're serving that will determine the wine pairing. You know, people say white wine with fish, they say red wine with steaks. That sort of thing, but I think the uh, the accompanying vegetables and the accompanying saucing sauces or vinaigrettes or whatever have a lot to do with the uh, the flavor profile of the dish and how it's going to go with whatever particular wine you choose. Um, that salmon dish I've been doing with a red wine, um, and you definitely you also want to make sure that the dish, in and of itself, is well balanced. Like you want to have a decent amount of acidity in the dish. You know, be it through adding a little bit of lemon or uh, vinegar something like that, and you want to make sure that the dish is seasoned with salt. Those things are the things that are going to balance out the, the tannins in the wine and that are going to make them, make them work well together. You know, if a dish is, say, you know, has a lot of savory flavors like mushrooms or something but doesn't have any seasoning, it's going to cause the wine to taste flat. If you season those mushrooms, then they're going to wake up and, uh, and sort of balance out the tannins in the wine. What red wine do you use for that when you do it at home? That's a Pinot dish. Okay. Yeah. So. Now, the, the last question I have for you, because I understand, and because we, we're running out of time here, and you got a uh, wine dinner to prepare, but I understand uh, from your bio that I read this morning that you are a fan of Top Chef. I have, I've been watching the show, yeah, oh. for sure. I don't watch a lot of uh, food TV, but uh, I'll watch the competition shows occasionally. It's kind of addictive. So, so who wins? Who wins this season? Uh, my money is it's on Kevin. Awesome. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that's all for this time. Uh, this has been Wine Chat. Thanks for coming out. Till next time, salute. Salute.